Hello everybody, you're very welcome to another podcast on our channel NarcCon. We have a very sleepy Remy over there on the sofa who's had a big walk and swim. You see he knows his name there of the little tail wag. Um, okay, today I'd like to speak about uh, how some of us tend to attract narcissists, multiple narcissists in relationships or are attracted to multiple narcissistic relationships over a lifetime until we actually hit the brick wall narcissist, the most painful narcissistic relationship that pulls us up in our tracks. In other words, we may have, you know, gone up smaller hills and down smaller hills after having an intimate relationship, say with a narcissist or a familial and been taken down, but not quite to the very bottom. And we've managed to, you know, pick ourselves back up after a painful period of recovery and go about our lives and enter another narcissistic relationship, maybe a little bit worse, but still something we were able to recover from. And then we hit the final, our final destination when we have to make a decision about our survival going forward. So that's what's going to come at the end of the podcast. To start off, I'd like to start at the beginning while we look at this topic, because so many people get to a stage in life where they're too frightened to actually re-engage in a relationship with anyone because they've met the brick wall relationship with the narcissist that they struggled to recover from, that they felt they would never recover from, and that literally frightens the wits out of us in relation to our mental stability because it roughed us around so much that standing back up on our feet again with any semblance of being a human being is a triumph of great magnitude and I know anyone that's been through the devastation of a narcissistically abusive relationship will know exactly what I'm talking about. So I was thinking about this topic today and it has come up again quite a bit in coaching and anyone that does or is interested in coaching before I go on people say that they don't know how to find me it's an email address in relation to inquiries would be narxcon at gmail.com. That's spelled N-A-R-C-S, narxcon, C-O-N, all one word, at gmail.com. So we land on Earth into a setting, and I have talked about this before, we land into a family, familial setting, or we land wherever we land. And we're faced with the issues of that setting. So some of us are lucky enough to land in a relatively normal, as normal as human beings are, family, where there's not a huge amount of psychopathy. There's not a narcissist, maybe. And we have a fairly regular upbringing. We have a fairly regular schooling and everything is not in extremis. So we have a moderate kind of set of values that are in certain normalistic or normal perimeters. And people who land on Earth in that setting generally then have a developed sense of normalcy, normalcy, what is normal, what's not normal. And to them, when they come across a narcissistic individual, even a covert narcissist, they can sense very, very strongly that something is way off with this person and their behaviour is meted out accordingly. So they keep that person at quite a distance. And because they've been brought up in a kind of a fairly normal setting, they are not looking for too much outside validation because they're fairly secure in who they are. And I'm not saying a person of this normal ilk cannot be drawn in by a clever covert narcissist. They can. I'm just saying 
in general, they don't get as many into as many narcissistic relationships. And I'll get into why that is in a few minutes on the other side of the coin. As would a person that is born into a family that is outside those perimeters of normalcy. So they have their own, the people that are more normal have their own course in life. They have their own things to discover. Um, they may be cracked open on a different rock in relation to understanding what their purpose is in life, or they may know from the very beginning because they've been nurtured in such a way that that has developed naturally in them. They will, of course, not be without their trials and tribulations. That is life. That is human life. There is going to be suffering. Hopefully, they won't be as immersed in suffering as people on the other side of the coin. I hope that's making sense. So that's the normal-ish family upbringing, where there's no extremes, no overabundance of narcissists in the childhood or in school, and the person gets away on a fairly normal trajectory in life. On the other side of the coin, for whatever reason, and if you believe, I don't know, I believe that we're all here to learn something and we all have a purpose and we all have something to contribute to the world. And some of us don't know that or know what that is until we actually get to understand and land within ourselves. So some people, some of us are born in a situation where there may be a narcissistic parent in our lives or a close family member may be a narcissist. Or you may be born into a whole nest of narcissists. You may then encompass a narcissistic teacher in school and on and on it goes. The reason someone who is familiar with the energy and ways and habits of a narcissist will meet more narcissists in their life or enter relationships with narcissists is purely, in my opinion, because your senses say to you, your survival instincts say to you, this is normal. You don't have the stronger definition inbuilt within you of what a normal human looks like or a normal human relation looks like. And I include myself in this. It is more of a familiar energy. So your radar and your alert signals for danger for this person being an extreme version of a human, this person having a high level of psychopathy is much less triggered or alerted to the fact that this person is dangerous to you. And in another sense, as I often say in coaching, what we encounter as a child that we are not able to deal with, we don't have the cognitive ability, we don't have the financial power, we don't have you know, a job, we can't leave the house, if we encounter a narcissistic parent and we're dreadfully hurt by that relationship and we're molded and folded by that relationship into adulthood and we meet that familiar spirit again, the familiar circumstances, we can enter an adult relationship in that energy, feeling it's normal with a sense of if I get into this relationship subconsciously and I can overcome it, I can show this person that I'm worthy and I can show this person that I love them so much by giving so much to them. I can complete the circle and heal the wound that I have deep inside me from my narcissistic parent. So in two ways, we attract and are attracted to the same dynamic that is familiar to us as a child, when we're still in the part of our brain that is fight or flight, we're still on a kind of a belief system and in a part of our brain 
where we're trying to overcome. And the same cycle is playing out in our brain, just as it is, in fact, with a narcissist. We are as unaware of the abuse we suffered as a child and our method of dealing with the abuse, which is to embrace empathy and to go out and try and heal, to try and heal outside of ourselves, to try and heal others so that we can overcome, to try and overcompensate by giving and complying and looking for approval and looking for validation from the narcissistic side of the world that never comes. And we're on, I'm trying to explain that we're on this rat wheel going around and around and around doing the same things with the same type of people. This often happens. And again, it's a generalization. But I would like to explain it in relation to the healing process or getting to the healing process. The narcissist also does this in that they seek out people that will allow them to be the controller of their lives, taking on the role of the controlling abuser in their childhood. So in a way, in a way, there is a certain section of people that have experienced narcissistic abuse in their youth who will either opt for empathy and healing or opt for controlling and abusing. But both people can tend to gravitate towards the rat wheel that keeps us going and entraps us in the same cycles. So people ask, why do I seem to attract narcissists and how come I've had so many relationships with narcissists? Even if you've had regular, normal, healthy relationships interspersed in between, that would be my explanation, basic explanation for why we are attracted to the familiar. Also, we're attracted to the familiar because Narcissists in our youth, narcissists often delve and deal in drama. Narcissists will use heightened emotions and situations that can appear exciting and that can be exciting. And a normal, healthy person can seem boring. And this is a real particular thing that it's very interesting to observe, to be objective about about ourselves and I'm going to get that again when we come to more into that when we come to the brick wall relationship with the narcissist that takes us down that's a do or die moment when we have to look at that side of things so let's just park that there for now so we're on this life trajectory and I'm just going to give you a little bit of personal experience because I believe that narcissists come in threes. But over a lifetime, so we find ourselves in a general sense, attracting narcissists, having friends that are narcissists, um, finding them everywhere in our life. And they're part and parcel of the people that we have in our lives, even if we have healthy people in our lives also. So we're on this journey then we get to the intense relationships, the intimate relationships. And as I said in the beginning of the podcast, we go from one relationship to the next, maybe interspersed with healthy, intimate relationships. But we're able to survive what we consider heartbreak, say, when, you know, we've been with a narcissist and we think it's normal the way they behave. We think the drama is normal and it's excited us enough to get us physically, chemically, spiritually attracted to this person. So we think it's all normal because that's what we've seen as normal in our lives. We think what they're telling us about ourselves is normal because somewhere in our lives early on, we were told that we weren't good enough and that, you know, we were crap at this, that we were crazy and that we needed to sort ourselves out. So if we're still in that trauma rat wheel where 
we haven't taken the time out. We haven't yet hit the brick wall. We're continuing in this pattern of behaviour and the narcissists are codependently in their pattern of behaviour and seek us out and we seek them out unwittingly to try and overcome and they're trying to totally control and it's never going to work. It's like two wheels working in tandem and just in a total cycle that keeps going on and on and on and on and on and on and no one gets off the wheel and that's the life experience unless you hit the brick wall, unless the brakes are put on the wheel and you jump off it. That's what I would like to get to now. We land on earth and we get onto a wheel if we're unlucky enough to land in a position where there's a lot of narcissism going on and we're getting very confused messages programmed into our brain about one, what love looks like and we take on the version of the love relationships that we see in our childhood. That goes into the brain, that's normal. That's a normal love relationship. Mm -hmm. So we're not alerted to any danger when we come across that relationship later on in life. The second thing that's programmed into our brain is the version of ourselves that is fed back to us, telling us who we are. That version of the brain is ticking over and is going around in cycles and wheels as we progress through life. And we are imprisoned by that. We're imprisoned by those messages and that programming that's in our brain, that narcissists are normal, that abuse is normal, even if it's been quite mild psychological abuse, but we've been in the energy space of a narcissist. We then progress into our lives we don't know what our purpose is because we haven't yet met our true selves. We don't know who we really are because the program is running. We're with narcissists. We're getting abused and we're kind of stuck in the version of ourselves that has been fed back to us from quite a negative energy source. And that's been repeated. Because we've been with more narcissists, the grooves in our brain and our neuro pathways are really getting deep as to us being stuck, believing the false narrative of a narcissist version of us because the narcissist version of us has to be bad because therefore the narcissist is good and the narcissist wins and the narcissist is in control and their wheel is running a lot faster than ours. But they're still on their wheel. They're never going to get off the wheel. They've really gotten stuck. Whatever chance we have of getting off our wheel of behaviour, cycles and patterns that it go on in the negative sense about ourselves, where we don't fulfill our potential and where we don't get to know ourselves. Unfortunately, a narcissist, a true narcissist, is who they are. And I have never heard or known or seen of a true narcissist ever being able to access their true self because of the way the nar narcissism is set up to protect them from ever looking inwards. However, other people that are not narcissists that have gone through abuse can get off the wheel. And I'm getting to the brick wall narcissistic relationship that knocks us for 10, knocks us for thousands, knocks us off the wheel, knocks us off the wheel. And we are splayed on the ground and we do not know how we are going to survive or get out of this 
depressed, traumatized, really crucial, critical state where we are a shell of ourselves, where we are so confused about what happened in the relationship with the major relationship with the narcissist. And this can be, again, the accumulation or the more intense version of relationships that have gone before with narcissists. This is the biggie. The particular narcissist or the particular relationship may not actually be like so spectacularly better or different to the other ones, but you've taken a lot of knocks along the way. You've been through too many battles and this was probably maybe your final hope. And this relationship also came crashing down and you came crashing down with it. And this time you couldn't get back up off your feet. You're stuck. You're left not wanting to go out. You're left in total rumination. You're left at a point where in order to survive, you have to change. You have to drastically reevaluate the whole of your life and the whole of your reason for being, you have to look at who you are and why you are. And you have to look at what people told you you are. And you have to challenge that. And you have to go on a whole new journey. And I guess this brick wall, this final relationship with this final narcissist has been a kind of an accumulation of you rising and the reason the relationships with the narcissists don't work out is because incrementally you have been getting healthier and more aware as time has gone on and you have been learning even though it doesn't feel like you've been learning and you've put up more boundaries with the narcissist with each incremental narcissist and as the boundaries go up the rejections come hard and fast and more crueler because the narcissist control is threatened. So if it's, say, your third intimate relationship with the narcissist and this one has brick-walled you, this one has knocked you off the wheel, it's because you were healthier and it's because the narcissist felt very threatened by you. But you still don't know that. And that's the... That's the wonder and that's the, the miracle that's being kept hidden as you are flattened against the brick wall and lying on the floor. You believe it's a punishment for the truth of you being maybe a crap person, but somewhere inside you know that's not true. Somewhere inside you know that's not true. But it's only after a certain period of time when you get the information and when you put two and two together and it actually makes four instead of ten. And you start to question and you start to say. I don't like the version of me that was fed back by these people. I don't believe it's true. I came from somewhere else where I did know myself. And that's why I always say I believe that we are all sent here for a purpose, that we forget where we came from, but we know who we are. And it's like our eyes are covered by a veil where we can't remember who we are until we meet the brick wall. When we come down from wherever we come from and land in earth, on earth, that some of us are given a harder task initially with landing into, say, the narcissistic nest, where we have to go through a more extreme journey in order to get to the brick wall point of our lives, where we crash and burn or we crash and thrive. So if we survive the crash, 
And hopefully with this information going out there to people and please share it, like and subscribe obviously would be fantastic, but please share it with someone that might need it. If we realize this information and we are able to reevaluate and stay off the wheel for long enough to be alone, to get to know ourselves and to get to consciously decide what we want to do next in our lives and to consciously decide that if someone comes along and immediately excites us, that that may be an alert that we need to listen to this time and not jump right in and party with that person and do whatever that person wants us to do without really saying, I can't afford to do this anymore. I can't afford to keep eating fast food for the quick hit as my gut grows, as I grow more unhealthy, as I get more ill, as I get terminal illness where I can't, you know, fight it any longer. I need to start preparing my meals slowly, choosing my ingredients wisely, mixing them together and eating at a time that is best for me and making sure that what I put into my body is going to be good for it. And I know you get the analogy. I think we won't get off the wheel until we hit the brick wall and are thrown off. It's up to us then to decide a few different paths that we can go. And I will give you a little bit of my personal experience in how narcissists come at you in one after the other at certain times of your life. And it can be the brick wall experience, the other side of the brick wall where you might meet another one or two in different settings. That's another part of the journey. But getting back to the fact that there are three different ways people will approach the aftermath of being hit by the brick wall narcissistic relationship that takes you off track totally. One, the unfortunate worst case scenario where the person never gets up and may make sure they never get up without saying anything further. This is YouTube where they don't go on any further. Let's put it like that. And that's why narcissists are extremely dangerous to us. Because some people don't have this information and some people don't know that there's hope after the brick wall. The second choice that a person will have is in a kind of a zombie-like state, they will get back on the wheel with no reflection, they may be very out of it, disassociated, not caring, but they'll get attracted to the wheel again, attracted to another narcissist and get back up and that one will finish them off. The third avenue people go is to say, I'm awake, I am awake, I am not going through this again, never. I will never go through this again. They reevaluate all of the relationships in their life. They identify narcissists that were in their life. They look at all the negative input and they take from that anything they think is relevant. And remember at this point, you're still that introspective empath. So you have to be very careful and it's a good idea to get some guidance on, on what you perceive as negative about you because it may be the total opposite. So you are basically, I suppose, rebirthing yourself. You are identifying with the being that landed on earth originally and you're feeling that being and you're allowing that being enough time in a peaceful setting to come to the fore. You're allowing it to flourish 
and to bloom and to blossom. And you're getting to know it. You're getting to know the essence of yourself. It doesn't happen overnight, but it does happen if you want it to. You then decide what direction you want to go in. And this is great if you can get some support in order to identify your passions and what could be possibly your purpose. And if you don't know what that is, to take small steps in a few different directions. Because once you take small steps in your self-advocacy, doors open. Once you get into the part of your brain that is not in fight or flight mode all the time, that is not on the wheel, and there's neuroscience to back this up. You get into the state of brain where you can look at things objectively, you can make conscious decisions objectively, and you're in what they call a flow state, where things come to you as you want them, as you step towards them. It's a not a confused state. It's not an emotionally reactive state. It's a state of peace and growing contentment. It's a more awakened state. And please leave in the comments. I know some of the people that I've spoken to in coaching have managed to get to this state. It's, it's literally as blissful as you can get on earth. It's literally an awakening to living life with a veil taken off your eyes and taken off all your senses. It's a spectacularly beautiful state of being. You relish every second of life. And of course, there are days when things are better than others. But you are experiencing the full flavour of life and you're partaking in energy that is not toxified by the traumatic fight or flight part of your brain. The experiences I had, guys, was after I hit the brick wall narcissistic intimate relationship where we're vulnerable and we go back out into the world, you will often oftentimes be attacked by other narcissists because they smell your vulnerability and you're, you haven't quite put up or learnt or enveloped your essence. So it's very important to, if you're in a withdrawal position where you've come off the wheel, where you're recovering from the brick wall crash, it's very important to protect yourself at this stage because they will come in. I had a workplace narcissist who I confided in, literally trying to, you know, take my job behind my back. And then I had after that, when I thought, Phew, that's clear now, I've cleared out a narcissist from the intimate relationship. And now I've managed to fight the narcissist in the workplace scenario, I thought, well, now there can't be any more narcissists coming along and I've gotten quite attuned to them. How much more fight do I have left in me? I need this energy for myself to grow. I don't want to, to have to expend energy on narcissists. I don't want to get back on the wheel. I don't want to be in the fight or flight mode of that part of my brain. I want to go into the growth, creative, joyful part that I've, I've seen hints of. I've been able to laugh again. I've been getting excited about my future again. You know that part. Then I had a tenant, someone that, you know, lived close by with me in my property. I had to meet another narcissist in that scenario. Once the three of them were gone, cleared, it was a beautiful time, an absolutely beautiful time. And you may still meet sporadic narcissists along the way, but you have that alert system built in because you won't go for the takeaway again. You are much more protective of this 
amazing life that you have uncovered that was always there. And just to get back to the beginning or the whole meaning of the whole thing, and I would like to do a podcast after this on your brain, on your brain and how actually simplistic it is to actually overcome narcissistic abuse by controlling your brain. And this is a fascinating, a fascinating part of the journey. But that's for another day. For now, I would say to you, for whatever reason you were chosen to have to go through this extreme experience as a spiritual being, to come to a place where you hard hitted that explosion and fierce feeling of yourself and your essence in order for you to understand what your purpose was here. I believe that you will be so compensated in life going forward, living in this new way, than you could ever believe possible for what you went through, through your own endeavours going forward. And what you will and are able to contribute to the world because you have been pushed to the extreme where you have to say, I love myself. I am enough. I'm brilliant. I'm great. I'm OK. I'm as good as anybody else. Not what the narcissist says. I'm better than everybody else. I'm as good and I can feel my fellow human who is also good, who's okay, who we can share love with, laughs with, friendship with, sorrow with, sadness with, productiveness with, development with, interest with. And guys, I'll just tell you, we're all the same the whole world over, and I've said it before. And we need to appreciate and enjoy our humanity and not the ones that try and destroy it. It's just wonderful meeting another human being from the far corners of the earth and realizing we all want the same things. We have the capacity to empathize, to love each other, to feel compassion, to want the other person to do well to embrace their happiness and your happiness, to share experiences, what could be better? That's what I love about being human. And what I would say to you is, the brick wall brings the human out in you. And the brick wall introduces you once you're able to overcome smashing against it. It's like cracking an egg open you finally become fully alive, fully recognize your purpose with the work that you do, not because of what the narcissist put you through. And a lot of people, me included, at the beginning of the healing journey, you know, when you, you have that discard from a narcissist and you don't want to go forward, you see no point in it. You know that point with, that you reach and you think, you do not want somebody on YouTube telling you that you will, will one day be glad that you went through this experience because of your endeavours to discover what you went through and to heal. You don't want someone to tell you that. You want someone to tell you that the narcissist will come back to you, that they made a big mistake, that they were the love of your life, that you were right that they were the love of your life and it's all going to be okay. At least that's what I wanted to hear when I was in that state, I wanted to understand how I could still fix the narcissist and, you know, that I could learn to live with the narcissist, that they just had a few issues and we could overcome it. You know, that's the beginning of the journey. So if anyone said, you know, on, on when I was listening to podcasts and reading books and educating myself about it, if anyone said that to me, I would turn the podcast off because it's not what I wanted to hear. Obviously, I didn't turn them off and I, I did listen eventually. It's painful to hear it. It's very painful to hear it. 
Um, but it's ultimately going to bring you into this most amazing place that you wouldn't otherwise discover had you not had the experiences you had and had you not been strong enough as you to overcome those experiences and to go on to live the very best of lives. So I wish you from myself and from Remy, we wish you the very best until we meet again next time. Please take care of yourselves and we will see you again soon. We're here for you and we're all here for us together as a community. Bye for now.